today's episode is on the Rubicon. Supercharged Rubicon with a RIP supercharger. Well, the problem is, right now the RIP supercharger has been removed. Okay, we had a little failure here the other day and I had one of the idlers fail. Okay, let me show you the idler. Here's, here's the old one. Okay, I've purchased bearings and I'm going to rebuild that. Okay, here's the make to it. And here's the replacement. Okay, now, Rip gets a hundred and almost $150 for one of those. Okay, it's a pretty good chunk of change. So I figured I could buy the bearings for $30 and we would go ahead and do it. I don't want to do a selfie. Here's L Supercharger. Sitting there waiting to go back in. Since it's been removed, Okay, one of the issues I had with removing it was the fact that when I bypassed the supercharger and took it clear off, all of a sudden I didn't have an air cleaner system. So I still had the old hose and I had Rip's air cleaner. So I took my 3D printer, I measured up and I just made a little joint to go in there. Worked out like a champ. I'll have to hang on to that and keep it in the rig for future if I have another issue. Take some of these pieces. Oh, here's what happens when the belt burns up. It took the plastic idlers and just turned them into crap, junk, deep groove, melted them right down. Plus it took me an hour to cut off the belt alongside the road, no fun. See what I can do right and wrong here. Been leaking a little bit, so I'm gonna have to change the oil when I get ready to go again. It has its own reservoir. I did confirm that the new one is the same height as the old one. Within a hundredth, hundredth, nope, it's right on. Okay, so we're good to go there. Turn that guy off and set it aside. We'll pull this around. Oh, okay, it's really not that bad. Let's see here. We need to rack it out. Oops. Losing critical parts. Okay. So these two rollers go in, and as you can see, let's see, I'm going to put. Put the old good one. Not doing very good. Everything wants to fall down. What can I set it on? Okay, we can try that. Anyway, when we build it, we build these guys like that, and you can see the alignment with the pulley. Supercharger pulley. Okay, and then we got the bracket. Looks like I got a drag. Put that guy down. It's well made. It's uh, I did have to do one modification. I had to grind out a notch in it, and that gave me access to my cam position sensor. 
Okay, let's see if we got this to go in the right way. Belt is towards that, so that should be towards the engine. Let's get it going the right way. That'll probably work better. That's not quite right. Pass backwards. Okay. Bolt and spacer. Two each. Where is bolt number two? There it is. I like the bolts that came with it originally, so I put longer bolts in it. But, got to pull those lock busters. So each of those guys gets a lock washer and a nut. So, we need one more washer. And that I know. It's in the bag. Right here. Okay. Yep, there's the 916. Stubby ratchet. Oh, you know what? I forgot an important, important step. Because... You gotta feed the belt on. Okay. And the belt is a K06-0994. That's the proper length. I have the standard pulley on the supercharger. Pop these back off real quick. We'll set that on there. There's the belt, happily encapsulated. I may take them apart with an air wrench, but I always put it back together with the hand tools just to make sure. Ooh-wee. That may be 
be too tight. I may need one more washer there. Nope, we're clear. I put longer bolts in because the other ones that came with it just were just a little bit too short and they didn't get a full full depth. And you know what a dumbass I did? I put the belt in backwards. <laughs> And I knew that. That looks better. Belt is now facing down because it has to be on these and this drops down over the steering pulley. So let's um, find a longer ratchet. Let's tighten up those first four so that we're on top of the game. Check. This is Vancouver, Washington, so it rains a lot. I'm going to be putting my knees there, so I might as well dry it off before I get involved. The intercooler. I left the bracket right here in place, and previously. I've removed the uh, coolant hose to get it in, but I'm going to try and do it without. It came out that way, so maybe I can get it back in. So we can see here, this bracket comes over to the base of the alternator, gives it more support. Oh, it has, I've got to remove the two bolts down there. And then we got this bracket here, which attaches to the back. And that stabilizes on the exhaust manifold. So let's see what we can do. First we better get those two bolts out of there. Oh yeah, almost forgot I need a half inch to remove the water pump cup pulley. My wife tried to hold me to an estimate on this, but you know what? I told her I was just going to take my time and enjoy it. It's good therapy to be working in the garage.
you have to remove these because you don't quite have enough clearance for the bolts that you have to remove or replace. because the bolt the supercharger uses is a little bit longer. So, pull that guy with the spacer out. Keep those for the kit. So that we've got it when we need it. That one, now we need the bigger one. Which was it? That one? It'd be this one. Three point eight V six, fondly called a minivan engine. Chrysler made it for a good number of years. Originally, it was a three point three, and so those two. Again, you have the cover. There's the bolts. Think that holds. Thank you. 
Okay, let's give her a start. Let's see if we've done everything right. Let's see if we need 10 millimeter. Battery. Looking good. Everything should be doing what it's supposed to. Well, I hope you've been endured this little video. It's uh, basically the rip, taking the rip supercharger, having it been removed, returning it to stock, and then putting the supercharger back on. Just basically walking through a few of the steps, putting the belt on, Mounting the supercharger, doing the test drive. You'll notice that when I shut the hood, it was a lot quieter. You really don't hardly hear it anymore from the inside. Maybe I've got used to it. That's my 2010 Rubicon two-door. Got 300 and, I don't know, 332,000 miles or almost 332,000 miles on it now. Just finally did the heads. Bottom end is still factory. Been a good little rig. I got 33s on it off a 2018 Rubicon. And it does everything I need it to do. It's a whole lot cheaper than buying a new one. Thanks for watching. Bye.